Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco, California for Informatica World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. I'm my co-host Peter Burris for day one wrap up of Informatica's Informatica World. Hashtag Infa16, that's their ticker symbol with the word number 16 for 2016. Uh, Peter and I are going to wrap up and kind of synthesize day one and kind of look to day two. We got a teaser, we got all the data from the news and it's going to run down the news real quick and then I'll get into some specific questions I have for you because, sure. and I'm sure you might have some for me because we have some great interviews. So I want to, and can't wait to get to the conversation about the healthcare one because I know, can't wait to ask you those. But the top news is essentially, um, Data 3.0 is their message to power business. That's their kind of theme. Data 3.0, I guess that's kind of a, trying to simplify this notion that data is really critical, data first, data is hard, data with a purpose, as Peter quoted earlier on the cube here. Um, they also announced self-service analytics. This is a kind of core theme, new era. I'm not sure it's a new era of self-service, but certainly a focused effort on self-service that intimates the cloud, and of course they had the unveiling of their first enterprise class integration cloud called iPaaS, integration platform as a service with massive data management, B2B gateways, data integration hub, and also the other key top line message is data at the speed of business. I mean, we've heard that before, but what does that actually mean? That's really the productivity of IT, and each one of these releases has that kind of message. And of course, data lake, in, in intelligent data lake powering marketing. A new offering by Informatica, taking internal development that they've productized as a new offering. Um, and then finally, you know, the business value with customer data. So IT messaging, you've got C-level messaging, you've got kind of developer, cloud, native cloud app, SaaS messaging, and essentially, you know, it's all about data, data management, and metadata. And so Peter, that's the hard news. So let's get through the interview. So we started out you know, with, with um, you know, the comms executive kind of laying out the messaging, okay, great. 3,000 people sold out, really a big focus on data. But Jerry Held, who's on the board, really came back on the queue, he kind of nailed it. This is about real time. He kind of synthesized that. What's your take on that? Because I think that's a good starting point. To talk about that he was saying, it's not about looking back for insights. Yeah, that's okay. Or looking forward, predictive and prescriptive. It's about the now, in the moment. I love that message from him. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I actually pretty strongly agree with him. Um, that uh, his, his core message is that as we move from a data orientation, uh, that is what has happened, and a data orientation to what's going to happen, where we can all kind of agree to right now, that the value of data only increases. Uh, and I think, John, that uh, we should we need to applaud Informatica. There have been a lot of companies over the years who've identified themselves with data. You know, the database management company or the data analytics company or the whatever else it might be. Informatica is kind of stripping a lot of that away and saying data company. That we are going to be, we want to be associated with data as data fueling the business. But what we've also heard, uh, and Jerry brought it up in this notion of value, is that there's still a lot of work to do as we try to diffuse this concept of data as a source of value in and of itself that needs to be taken care of, that requires tooling to maximize its value, that is, uh, requires new ways of learning and new ways of thinking to make use of it. Data is still hard. And uh, what I think we came out of today's messages was pretty strongly, Informatica is putting a stake in the ground, they're going to do this, they're going to put the investment in place, but it's still real hard, and therefore it's a worthy goal of Informatica to try to bring this notion of how you use data to make business better uh, is, is, is a worthy goal, and uh, there still requires a lot of work. Well, I mean, I like that, that point, you said data is hard. Totally agree, it reminds me of the old picks and shovels days of the gold rush. I mean, the picks and shovels are just getting better and better still. We don't have any heavy machinery yet, but on the horizon, you're seeing some of the the future play out here with Informatica's positioning. They went from a data warehouse company, they're one of those guys, 
in the, in the vendor communities on that side of the street, the old way, went private. And I got to say, since I've been talking to them on the queue for the past two years now, it's clear. They're not mailing it in as trying to say we're the new way. They're actually doing it. So they went private and they're very data centric at the DNA. And I liked some of the things you said. You said something on the queue, again, another queue, but uh, original point here. Data with a purpose. And I, and I want to bring that up because I want to get your thoughts on this because this highlights why I think Informatica has the, the secret weapon in their, in their architecture. They have built this idea that data can flow anywhere and that they want to incent more ingestion of data on behalf of the customer because they believe that data is going to add value in the equation of enabling some business value, also optimization and some, some infrastructure. So, so the comment is this, if data with purpose is the, our theme, which it is, context, a theme you're doing a lot of research around, really, really plays out. So the word context now changes the notion of what data could be used for, or how to store it, why to store it, what it can be used for, and then how to apply it, which ultimately might put a price on the value of the data, which you've been trying to get at now right. for a couple cube gigs. Yeah, Your totally. thoughts? Yeah, that, that's exactly right, John. And in many respects, we say data with purpose and data in context are, I don't want to say reflections of the same thing, but they're very, very closely related. Uh, business increasingly is starting to articulate what contexts it operates in. What does it do with customers? What does it do with partners? What does it do within, within its markets? It's that notion of what do we do? Related to that is, what data do we need to do it? Uh, because as you said, it's not enough to be able to say that we can aggregate data faster, we can move data more efficiently. It's ultimately we have to deliver it to someone at the point that they need it. And that's one of the things that we're still trying to tease more out of everybody, including in today's conversations, that ultimately the value of data is most obvious in its application to a particular task or, a, or work to be performed or commitments and promises that are being made to customers. And this notion of data with purpose is how do we tie data back to those promises, those commitments, those tasks. And that to me, I think that to us, ultimately is what's going to separate the winners from the losers uh, for those companies that supply the tools. Uh, we know that, we know how to deal with hardware as it pertains to data. We've got a lot of open source tooling that to grab and aggregate data. We're still seeking out those deep insights yeah. about how to deliver those insights. And I think yeah. that that's where the winners and losers are going to be separated. Yeah. And data with purpose and data in context really applies to the some of the interviews we've had, especially with customers. And you know, we go to a lot of the big data shows, we try to extract the signal from the noise, and you folks out there know we do that. And we talk to a lot of people, we're optimizing our ads and getting better offers, and we always hear that. Okay, get that personalization, pushing notifications to users, great user experience but no other better example of the value of data than Marvis Gerlinghouse, who came on what here and said- What a great interview. I said, she, I asked her what was the most exciting thing. She says, getting data from the lab real time around septic has saved lives. And she's personally witnessed how the movement of data in purpose, in, with purpose in context saves a human being's life. Now to me, you can't put a better paintbrush on a story than that. Well, she was saying that, look, her job as a big data professional, she can point to how it has saved lives. And not everybody can do that. You know, not everybody yeah. can do that. A good ad delivery doesn't save a life. You know, yeah, going <laughs> but, but, what, what, but what we talked to Mavis about, well, at some point in time, is she, is her team and her business going to be delivering options or recommendations to consumers when they pull into a fast food restaurant uh, because they got an offer from somebody else. So will there be compensating offers made so that someone says, hey, you know, we got uh, get your get your big fat burger for a buck fifty as opposed to eight bucks. Uh, will then healthcare provide or health services or wellness services provide a compensating message saying, yeah, you can eat. We see where you are. We see that you've just pulled into the into the uh, location. But by the way, this is not part of your health regimen. This is not what's going to make you more healthy. So the notion that big data is 
going to be used just for op just for offers is kind of Mavis helped put a lie to that, you know, generally oh. by saying, yeah. look. We can tie this back to all kinds of different behaviors as long as we focus on the delivery yeah. of the data in the form of a recommendation or an option that's going to affect how people take decisions. And the and Cap make Gemini actions. guys were very good about pointing out that data lakes can turn into data swamps, but that doesn't mean they're they're over because if you can get that data in context and change the nature of how dirty it's not dirty data anymore. So this we're going to see an evolution of data cloaking, if you will, is going to change and be valuable and not value is going to go away. So it's going to be interesting to see that happen. And, and, and I think that's interesting because now that means data lake isn't the end all be all. It's the beginning of how to integrate the data. Well, let's put it this way, John, that, uh, that the notion of data in context or data with purpose suggests that we can actually start putting in place governance regimes that are truly tied to data as an asset or the value of data as an asset. Uh, historically, we've tied data back to, uh, we've tied data governance back to the rules that the application suggested or required or the regulations that came out about who, you know, privacy or reporting and what you needed to do. And what the Cap and I fellows were talking about essentially yeah. was new, uh, a new basis for thinking about data governance regimes uh, that can be tied specifically back to value. We got a lot of work to do on this, but to your point, that what ultimately what we want to be able to do is we want decision makers to be making yeah. this great decisions about data itself and not just about uh, not just about the hardware that runs, uh, that the data is stored in, yeah. or the software that processes the data. We need to introduce superior approaches to thinking about data as an asset so that we can generate the right returns yeah. out of it and value out of it, but also continuously appropriate the right investment to it. I think that you know, the real-time stuff, certainly very relevant in the moment, home run, I like that, but I think the thing that I like the most, and I'd share with the audience out there, is that um, Ronan Schwartz is the general manager and senior vice president of the new cloud group. I think that's the biggest opportunity. I think, and I saw this last year, and I mentioned it at Informatica World 2015 in Vegas, was that if Informatica can pull off the ability for data to be open and free and traverse across applications freely and in real time and in low latency, at the same time, not blowing the compliance and regulatory uh, problem, and if they can maintain that in stack, they would have the keys to the kingdom, literally, with the master data. So I said to, to Dave last year, I said, if they can maintain- This the, is Dave Vellante. Dave Vellante, uh, the co-host last year at the event. If they can maintain the master data management aspect and benefits of what that means, and all the compliance and regulatory reporting stuff they got to track, at the same time, enable the growth of SaaS apps and cloud, they will have a winning formula. So what's interesting is this integration cloud talks about live data maps and you know, cloud master data management. That to me could be the holy grail because now I have a system for managing you know, the compliance and the data management stuff I have to watch kind of in between the, the, you know, the details and the cracks, all the little stuff. At the same time, enable an innovation strategy to pursue SaaS apps, middleware uh, with data, I think that is going to be a key because that's what the develop, developers don't want to get into the compliance. It's like, look, I'm just building cloud native apps, but I need to work with my ERP system or my CRM, and I want that data when in context to something that's going on in the workload that I'm building, which could be anything, an IoT app, a retail app. So I think the secret of the future will be how to get the edge of the network, whether it's a human or a machine, in real time context to other data across multiple environments. That is the holy grail. It's super hard, but to me, Informatica set up to do that. Well, let's, let's so, so uh, and here's, first of all, I, I agree with you that, uh, that Informatica, as we said at the beginning of this little conversation, that Informatica has made a commitment to the marketplace that they're going to focus on data. Not certain elements of it, but data. They're going to be thought leaders and deliver tooling for data. Very, very important point. But let's, let's, let's step back a little bit. Everybody wants to talk about digital business. Not too many people really articulate what they mean by that. From our perspective, you're doing digital business if you are transforming more of your business activities into data so that it can be measured, processed, combined, 
and manage differently. And that's really the essence of digital business is turning more of your business into data, transforming more of your business into data. Uh, Brian Gracely, uh, our Wikibon's cloud analyst who looks at a lot of different things, recently wrote a series of reports on what it means to then deliver a digital business platform that's capable of providing that substrate necessary for digital business. And one of the key elements that he talked about was this notion of data flows. Now we specifically did not talk about an engine or we did not talk about a some resource that's going to administer or arbitrate all the flows, but the notion that flows are going to become a crucial element of how we think about digital business. And I agree with you, I think that, uh, I think that what we heard today uh, was that uh, essentially we need to start looking at how we're going to support data flows within the business as it, uh, you know, uh, as, as we envision how systems are going to come together, how APIs are going to work, how we're going to present ourselves through data out to marketplaces, et cetera. That Informatica, through that cloud integration facility, is putting a stake in the ground about how you're going to process those crucial data flows. And then we have to see, get some of the details about scalability, uh, how that gets virtualized, can it, can it be used in a lot of different ways, some big questions uh, on the horizon for how this then translates into business. Some big questions and we've got big answers coming up. Of course, we're doing our part of theCUBE to share the data. And again, more use cases coming out from Texas, from the Indian oil company, um, LTD as another example, healthcare, and a variety of customers. And we, and we're hearing the repetitive theme on theCUBE now over the past few shows. Business model innovation is here and the conversation shifting from what's under the hood, although very important, to business model innovation. I think that's the key. So Peter, my final question to wrap up before we talk about tomorrow, which we have all the top execs coming on. We have Jim Davis, EVP, CMO. We have Amit, the chief product officers on last year. Great guests. We're going to get even more data tomorrow. We got some chief security officers coming on from their customers. What are you doing with the research team at Wikibon and as head of research with SiliconANGLE Media What's your agenda? What would you share with folks? As you get more immersed with theCUBE, and as you look at some of the trends we're extracting in real time, how is that affecting your research agenda and some of the things we're focused on? Just give a little taste for the folks watching what we're doing and what you're working on. Well, the first thing is that we are increasingly focusing on how digital assets are going to be used by business to engage their customers differently. Uh, that doesn't mean that the idea, for example, big data as it pertains to operations and optimizing uh, how operations work is unimportant. Uh, it would just think, however, that a lot of the investments, for example, that Informatica is making are increasingly pointed in, uh, towards the challenges of engaging the marketplace. The second thing that we're focusing on is something that we're still, in a lot of the questions that you asked and we heard today, how are developers going to tease value out of these new systems that are inherently uh, not set up as, uh, uh, as with, the, with the data schema set up beforehand, but actually are on the fly. And that's the second thing we're looking at, is the role that developers are going to play in creating new value out of the data. And I think the last one, uh, one of the last issues, is this crucial notion of uh, what Jerry Held and others are talking about, real-time decisions. Now we've heard about it in the past, I like to talk about, as you said, I like to talk about systems for the now, as opposed to systems for the past or systems for the future, systems for the now. And that has enormous bearings on how IOT gets conceived, on how big data gets managed, and some of the investments. So I think it would be the notion of digital business, uh, as it pertains to uh, these new capabilities of, of uh, building, uh, or developers building things faster, so that we can turn business uh, with greater velocity because we're focusing on real time. So big data, infrastructure, cloud coming out of your group. Folks, go to wikibon.com, check out the research. Of course, it's free content and, and there's a premium version behind the firewall for a lot of great stuff. Go to siliconangle.com uh, for the blogs, go to theCUBE, siliconangle.tv. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. It's a wrap for day one. See you tomorrow with the CEO of Informatica coming on, all the top executives and their best customers. So day two coverage tomorrow. Stay tuned right here on siliconangle.tv. This is theCUBE. Hi, this is Chris Devaney from Data Robot.